Just over the way here, there's a couple of apartments facing directly up the Sydney coastline, facing north, huge apartments. They must be worth 10 million, 15 million bucks each. But the lights, never on. Around Australia's choicest property market destinations, in Sydney and Melbourne particularly, but Gold Coast too and other places, prices have gone through the roof. They've gone through the roof everywhere in the past few years. Now, this is due to deliberate government policy. Inequality is on the rise. We have two kinds of Australians, those with rich parents who can shoehorn their kids into a nice property and those that don't have that luxury. Now, a lot of this is due to government policy, things like negative gearing, which allow all the investors to buy property after property with tax breaks. A lot of it's due to land banking by property developers. Some of it's due to supply issues. Some of it's due simply to the Australian culture of home ownership. But there's one thing which we could easily fix, which the government, successive governments indeed, have been dithering about for 14 years now. and That is anti-money laundering legislation, so-called AML, CTF. The second part of it is counter-terrorism financing. Because as Greg Medcraft, a former chairman of the corporate regulator ASIC, said, he let slip, Australia is a paradise, he said, for white-collar criminals. Now, he must have got a call from Matthias Cormann, who was finance minister, and shut him down straight away, and he backtracked. He said it to a few journalists, and he quickly backtracked. The cat was out of the bag, because Australia is a paradise for white-collar criminals. And part of the problem here is for younger Australians that the explosion in black money for real estate developers, accountants and lawyers means there's a lot of money, black money indeed, swishing around in Australia's property market, inflating the prices. Now, every year we have a custom, and that is to call whoever is in charge of this part of government, the AMLCTF, the money laundering reforms. Because the first tranche of the money laundering reforms came in in 2006. The second part of these laws was meant to come in the next year. Another year is drawing to a close, 14 years later. And what's happened? Nothing. So every year we ring the relevant minister's office and we ask, what's going on with your tranche two of the legislation which covers lawyers, accountants and property developers? This is the kind of response that we get. A cost-benefit analysis of extending AML CTF regulation to certain non-financial business is well progressed and will be completed by July this year. The outcome of the cost-benefit analysis will inform the government's decision on the regulation of tranche two entities under the AML CTF Act. Now that was almost five years ago now that we got that response. But every year we go in, we went into Karen Andrews, who's the new minister following Peter Dutton, that covers Austrac financial regulation stuff as far as money laundering goes. We didn't even get a response from Karen. Dutton was no better. Previous ministers, generally, it, this thing's thrown around like a hot potato. It was in the AG's department before, now it's in home affairs. But this is the greatest dither. And in fact, while Australia is dithering, Australia has joined the illustrious company of China, Mongolia, Madagascar, Mauritius and the US being the only six countries in the world that are not complying with global rules on anti-money laundering and counter-terrorism financing. So if you're a terrorist, bring your money in because you'll be able to wash it through Australia. If you're a Chinese billionaire, buy a couple of properties over here you won't have to tell anybody or anything like that. You won't have to say where your money has come from. You won't have to say that you took more than US $50,000 out of China, which is not legal. Of course, Chinese investors and foreign investors generally, they're not buying properties that they can speculate on the city property market. They're just parking their money. They're hedging it. This is an investment. They buy something in the US. They buy something in Australia. They are spreading their geographic risk by buying Australian property, which is sitting vacant when there are more people living below the poverty line in Australia than ever. They're not concerned about getting the best deal, about paying 1.5 because the last guy paid 1.4.
they'll just slap 10 on the table. They just need to park the money to get it out of the country. And this kind of price inflation pressure pushes prices up for everybody. How much money is involved? Well, we don't know because it's not being tracked by the regulator, Austrac, properly because there are no mandatory disclosure limits. So if you're a lawyer, if you're an accountant like the big four, if you're a property developer, you can just take money from anywhere, put it into anything, you just wash it yourself effectively. Now we've called the Law Council of Australia about this, just got a nothing response. We've called the big four, CANS, you know, the peak body for the big four accountants, nothing response. These are the mysterious stakeholders that have been lobbying the government for 13 or 14 years to stop this second part of the legislation coming into place. And so it is that property prices have gone through the roof. It's not the only reason. There are many, many reasons, but gee, it's an easy fix. Now, Canada, just a few days ago, the Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is moving to ban foreign investment in residential property other than property which is used in a bona fide way for recreation. So he's moving to ban that because this is a problem. It is a huge problem of inequity. It is soaking up supply. The fact is, it's an easy fix. Like this video if you'd like to see Australia as a democracy, not a plutocracy. Patreon itself does not allow us to engage in criminal acts or launder money through its platform. So if you're not a terrorist and you're not a subscriber, give us a few dollars now and Merry Christmas to you.